Everybody makes mistakes when typing code, even experts do. If you make a mistake in HTML or CSS, the browser will usually try to render your page. In fact, browsers are so good at dealing with errors, you often don't notice the error until you submit the page to a validator. With PHP errors, the browser often doesn't get a chance. You either get a completely blank screen or a bald error message like this. Even if the browser manages to display the page, you might end up with a series of ugly messages like this. Unfortunately, PHP error messages are not exactly the most user-friendly for beginners, but they do contain valuable information that can help you solve the problem. The purpose of this chapter is to help you understand them and to correct errors in your PHP code. Each video has a title that should make it easy to find the solution you need. When using PHP in a website, it's important to know how the server is configured. Let me quickly go to my editing program. And here I've got configuration.php. It contains a single line of code. It's PHP info with pair of parentheses, semicolon, inside a PHP block. And if I go back to my browser, this is what it outputs. It's a complete listing of all the configuration settings on your server. And the important ones to look for are those related to errors. So let's just quickly search for errors. And this first one here, display errors, on this machine, it's on. This setting, display errors, should be on in your testing environment, but off in a live website. Another important setting is this one right down at the bottom. Let's just scroll along a little bit. There it is, error reporting. It's expressed as a number, and in PHP 5.4 and 5.5, it should be 32767. If it's a lower number than that, you're not getting all the errors being reported. Now, if your testing environment is set up like this, you're fine to go. If not, and you need to make any changes to these settings in your local testing environment, the simplest way, as long as your testing server is running on Apache, is to use a .htaccess file. Let me just show you. It's in the chapter 0707 underscore 01 folder. And this is what it does. It sets error reporting to the highest level and turns on the display of errors in your local testing environment. So if you're running Apache, all you need to do is remove this from this particular folder and put it in your server root and then you've got the highest level of error reporting and all the errors will be displayed. If you're on a remote server and errors are being displayed, uncomment this line 11, just take away that hash symbol and errors will be turned off, or at least the display of errors will be turned off. Some hosting companies allow you to use a .user.ini configuration file. Check with your hosting company if they do allow you to use that, then this is the correct file that you need to use. It's also in the chapter 0707 underscore 01 folder, and it just sets display errors to zero. In other words, it turns it off. And it's very important to turn off the display of errors on your remote server because it looks bad. It just really looks bad. And it can also expose sensitive information which you just don't want to be out there in the open. So displaying error messages and setting the level of error reporting to the highest level is essential in a local testing environment because you need as much information as possible to resolve errors. But the display of error messages should be turned off on your live website. Not only do error messages look ugly and unprofessional, they can also reveal sensitive information that could be useful to an attacker. Imagine this scenario. You've just uploaded a PHP page to your website, but when you view it in a browser, it's completely blank like this one here. Even if you view the source code, there's nothing there. It's completely blank, absolutely nothing. This actually happens quite a lot. Let's examine why and what to do about it. Let's go into my editing program. Here is the original page, and it's certainly not blank. Let's go to another page. This one has a similar problem, but there does seem to be something there. We've got this 
white strip at the top and we've got a background image. So if we look at the source code, we've got the doc type there, we've got the head, and we've got the beginning of the body, but everything is truncated after that first div tag. The reason that this has happened in both cases is because display errors has been turned off in the PHP configuration. And this often happens when you decide to use your remote server to test pages rather than installing a local testing environment. And it can also happen with a page that works locally but fails when you upload it. Many hosting companies turn off the display of errors these days as a security measure. And to simulate this situation, I've added a .ht access file to the 07 underscore 02 folder to disable the display of error messages. So if you're faced with this type of situation, the way to deal with it is to turn on the display of error messages temporarily in your remote server. You do that within the page itself. The very first thing that you put after the opening PHP tag is INI underscore SET, then open parenthesis and in quotes, display underscore errors, then a comma and in quotes one. And let's just copy that. We'll put it in the other page. And let's save both pages and go back to the browser. And in the case of this page, when I reload it, we still get a blank page. And the reason for that is there's a syntax error in this page. Turning on the display of errors temporarily using any set doesn't work if there's a syntax error. A syntax error just kills the page completely. But if we go to the other page that was truncated and reload, we then get the error messages telling us what's happened. And this is extremely useful for debugging the problem. So if you've got a completely blank page, try turning on the display of errors using any underscore set and then display errors with the value of one. But if your editor's syntax checking doesn't reveal the cause of the problem, there's nothing else for it than to test it on a server which is configured to display error messages. This any underscore set doesn't work if you've got a syntax error. In fact, my editor tells me that there is a syntax error here on line three. What's missing is the closing parenthesis after string to lower. That syntax error will go away. And if I save that page, refresh the browser, there it is, it's displayed. Everything is fine. So it was the syntax error that was causing that blank page. For other errors, turning on the display of errors temporarily using any set at the top of your script is an extremely useful workaround. But don't forget to remove that line once you fix the error. Another problem could emerge at a later date and you don't want to reveal it to everyone who visits your site. Parse errors, like the one shown on the screen here, are among the most common error messages that you're likely to see. Parse is the technical term for what happens to a PHP script when it's processed by the server. And if there's a mistake in the code, the PHP can't parse it. So let's take a look at this error message and see if we can find the problem in the code. It says unexpected if, and it tells us it's on line four. So let's go to the editing program and look at this page. Line four, doesn't look to be anything wrong with that if to me. And in fact, there is nothing wrong with it. And this is what confuses a lot of people. It says it was on line four. What was on line four was an unexpected if. In other words, the error lies before that. If shouldn't be there. Why shouldn't it be there? Well, on line three, the semicolon is missing. So if we put that semicolon in and save the page, go back to the browser, and reload it. Oh dear, we've got another syntax error. Unexpected UTF, T string on line 13. Oh dear, let's go back, look at that. And this is where having syntax coloring is extremely useful in an editor. What has happened is that it says that there's an unexpected UTF on line 13. Well, this is right down in the HTML. So there seems to be something terribly wrong there. Well, actually, what has happened is that there's a mismatch somewhere of quotes. 
And the syntax colouring in Dreamweaver, it puts strings in red. We've got an opening double quote here, and this is being regarded as the closing double quote of that string. And the problem actually lies up here on line 6. The matching closing quote should be double, not single. And once I do that, my syntax colouring in Dreamweaver changes. It looks as though everything is fine. Those syntax errors have gone away. Let's save the page and reload it. Oh my goodness, another parse error. Unexpected end of file on line 29. And this is one that gets people really tearing their hair out. Let's go and have a look at the problem there. Line 29. Hang on, that is the end of the file. Well, that's exactly what the error message says. We got to the end of the file, it was unexpected. There's an error message there. And unfortunately, Dreamweaver's syntax checking indicates that the error is on line 27. It's not there. Let's go back up and have a look to see what the problem might actually be. And something which can be quite useful in some programs is what is known as balancing braces, finding the matching opening and closing braces. And if I look here, put my cursor after that opening brace and use balance braces in Dreamweaver, it selects that. And if I put it here, it gives me a little bong and it says I can't find anything. And what's happened is I've missed out the closing curly brace. And if you get this parse error, end of file, that's almost certainly what the problem is, that somewhere you've missed out a closing curly brace. And it can be a bit of a bind trying to find out where it is, but that's what you've got to look for. So if we save that page, go back to the browser, and we now get the page that we were originally looking for. And this final page tells you what most common problems with parse errors are. Forgetting the semicolon at the end of a statement, mismatched quotes, and a missing curly brace or parenthesis. And something which you should have noticed from this, that only one error message is shown at a time. So if you've got multiple errors, you need plenty of patience to work through them. But with practice, you'll learn to spot the cause much more quickly. Also, having an editor that has syntax colouring and checks your syntax on the fly will help you spot errors as soon as they occur, making them much easier to pin down and eliminate. And I can tell you, when I first started doing PHP, syntax checkers didn't exist, so we had to learn the hard way. Life is a lot easier if you use a good editor.